Hi, it's Marcus Giuliano from Aroma Time Bistro, Hudson's Valley's first green certified restaurant. And uh, today I'm going to tell a story about a place, a uh, very prestigious place that I worked in Colorado, a five star, mobile five star property. And it was my second time working at this place as I went there uh, in culinary school. I went and took a semester off and worked for six months, the summer and, and the spring semester. Had a great time, and since I've always loved Colorado, decided to go back to this place in 1997 upon returning from Pierre Kaufman, uh, La Tante Claire in England, in uh, London. So I get to <clears throat> our famed resort um, in Colorado Springs, and I'm happy to be back, so happy to be back. I love it there, I love the people, I love the atmosphere, I love the, I love Colorado, I love the hotel. Um, I'm, I grew up in Colorado, so I feel like it's home turf for me again. Um, I'm back after uh, after not being there for three years at this hotel. I know a lot more. I've worked now at the Greenbrier uh, for almost three years, six months at La Tante Claire, a little bit of work at Anton Mosman's at Mosman's in London. <coughs> so I really came back now um, because I really wanted to be a demi chef. I wanted to be a sous chef. I, I had higher aspirations. So I wanted to uh, take a leadership role. Um, so that's what that that's what I was going back to this hotel for. And I got to tell you, my first, not, very first night on the line, I remember uh, the chef Michael uh, of the restaurant uh, in this hotel. Um, I, you know, I didn't have much time to prep the station. I got there, and you know, I kind of inherited uh, somebody else's station. They threw me right on the broiler station um, <clears throat> in this in this uh, restaurant, which is on top of like the it's on the, it's on the top floor of the south building of the hotel. Um, it was their uh, it was their French restaurant. And I was so happy to be back, and, and so I, I kind of like inherited everything. And I remember the snappers, snapper orders started coming in. It was time for me to start cooking the snappers. Um, this got really busy really quick. I, I mean, so uh, the snappers start coming in, the tickets start coming up. I go to grab the snappers, the fish. And uh, now I should have gone through the station more thoroughly that day, and but I didn't. Time restraints, it's just what happened. Um, I, I, you know, I, I really don't know why I wasn't allowed more time to really get the job done. I was just really thrown in. They were understaffed. And, but I go to start serving the snapper. I go to start cooking. And I'm like, I'm like, chef, this isn't good. I'm like, the snapper's not good. And he's like, don't tell me that now. I got seven orders on the board. You got to serve this. I'm like, but we can't serve it. It's not good. Smell it. He's like, just wash it off. And uh, I got to tell you something. He, he made me serve that fish. I was mortified. Mortified. This is a five star property. This is a very nice property. I still love the property. I was there visiting last year in Colorado Springs. I love this hotel. In fact, I went to I went to grade school right behind the hotel. That's how much of a homecoming this was. I went to the Catholic school right behind the hotel, uh, Pauline Memorial, uh, up until fourth grade. <laughs> so I knew the hotel. That's how well I knew the hotel. <clears throat> and the chef was like, "I need that food, and you're serving." I'm like, "Tell the customer the truth." Tell the customer we dropped it. Tell them something. Recommend something else. It's like, I need the food and you got to serve it. I was so mortified that I'm coming to a place with such big standards and I have some schlub doing this to me. This guy was a schlub. And it didn't reflect the management of the hotel because if the management knew it, if if uh, Chef Ziggy knew it, uh, if, if the food and beverage director knew it, they, 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 they wouldn't let me serve it. They wouldn't let him serve it. So I went to... Um, I think I went to the chef's office, or I went to uh, went to the food and beverage, food and beverage director's office, and I told them the next day. I said, "I'm in shock. I'm in shock of the, of the standards that are just happening. I, I mean, uh, unacceptable for my superior, my boss, to insist that I serve bad food. This is what happened. I called the guy out. I was like, "There's no way that I'm taking the fall for this schlub." wanting me to serve fish after I'm telling him it's not good. And uh, I said, I'm not taking the fall for this. I'm being honest with you. And this is an, I'm, I'm not here to serve bad food. I'm here to cook. I'm here to serve good food. I'm here to represent this hotel. I love this hotel. And, uh, you know, if you want me to, there's no way I'm going back to work for this guy. You've got to put me in another restaurant. you got to move him. you got to do something. you got to make it quick because there's no way that I'm going to be able to walk in 
and look at this guy every day who I know has no problem serving bad food to our guests here at this beautiful hotel. And uh, so the schlub uh, and I, yeah, we, we had a uh, we had an okay relationship. I don't know if you ever knew that I went and and uh, did that to him, but man, <clears throat> just really depressing. Um, you know, because I, I knew better, all the other guys on the line knew better, and it's just you know, in a situation like that here at my restaurant, if something like that does happen, sometimes the coolers are off. Sometimes, sometimes it's not actually old product. Sometimes the product will go into a part of the cooler where there's no circulation, or the fish doesn't get iced down, or somebody takes their hands and touches the fish, which I like everybody to wear gloves in my restaurant, and they cross-contaminate bacteria, and the fish that builds up water in the bottom of the pan, not strained properly, and a lot of things can happen with the coolers five degrees off, you know, from 40 to 45 or 42 to 47 makes a big difference. That fish is going to go bad a lot quicker. Three days earlier or four days earlier, I mean, it can, it can go, <clears throat> it can spoil. So it might have not just been like old fish sitting around. It could, something else could have happened to it. Um, but, you know, that's, yeah, that's, in my restaurant, we're just honest to people and we're saying, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry, um, Marcus, uh, the chef. Um, it, our standards at Aroma Time, it's not up to our standards after we took your order and we're so sorry, but we wouldn't want you to be dissatisfied because we stand behind our food and, and we wouldn't personally eat it. Do you know how far that goes? That goes extremely, <coughs> extremely far. And our customers love that. And you have to be honest. I find you always have to be honest. If you drop the top of their burger bun, go to the table. We drop the top of your burger bun. We're heating a new burger bun and your dinner's going to be another two minutes meantime everybody else has their food at the table so that's you know that's part of the problem so you have to go explain that and, and people just say wow i've never had somebody explain to me in a restaurant that a part of my food was dropped and they're making the other part they go but thank you for being honest <clears throat> instead seven people that night got bad fish um that i was just i was bad i don't know if they noticed i don't know if they complained i don't know if it was me being over um over pompous and maybe the fish wasn't really bad but it was um, it was it was it was not good, <clears throat> and uh, you know because sometimes chefs you know get get a little um, touchy and they oh this isn't good I'm not serving this and that which I do that too because it's our standards coming out, um, but seven people got bad fish at night uh, at this world class resort and uh, gotta tell you I, <laughs> it's not my policy to do that I learned a long time ago you don't serve bad food. Um, it just does not happen. And every now and then, you know, uh, I'm sure it's snuck by in my kitchen, other kitchens I've been in that I've been in charge of, um, because of unforeseen circumstances, because a cook just isn't paying attention. Cooks need to taste all their food, smell their food, look at their food. You can just tell by looking <coughs> at, like, chicken wings or chicken breasts or fish. And you can just see the, the glisten on it, if it's bad or not. And just quick, quick nose in a pan tells you a lot. And that's part of, part of being a good cook is understanding that. So, uh... That's, uh, <clears throat> that's my story on my return to the uh, Broadmoor Hotel in 1997. So, uh, love the place. Love the place, love the place. We'll never say anything bad about the Broadmoor. Um, but that was my first day back there. So, things changed after that, though. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. And you're watching my channel, MarcusG.TV. Thank you very much.